This podcast is on ecology and the biosphere and is meant to correspond to chapter 52 in the textbook. Ecology is the study of organisms and their environment. Climate influences the type of organisms in an ecosystem. Climate refers to long-term weather. In biology, there's a hierarchy. When we're talking about ecology, we can start with an organism which makes up a population. A population is a group of organisms of the same species. Then a community contains all the populations or all the different species within a given area. The ecosystem contains the community and all the non-living factors. And the biosphere contains all the ecosystems on the planet. Climate is influenced by sunlight. When sunlight strikes the equator, it's at its most direct angle. When sunlight strikes the poles, it's at its least direct angle. Therefore, the sunlight is less intense. The intense angle of sunlight at the equator affects air circulation and precipitation. Because it is hot at the equator year round, a lot of water evaporates, creating warm, moist air. That warm, moist air rises and moves towards the poles. This creates a lot of rain in the tropics and causes the rising air to become dry. The dry air sinks around 30 degrees, which is the area we find a lot of deserts. The sinking air flows towards the poles and around 60 degrees rises again and releases precipitation. This cold, dry air flows to the poles where it descends and flows back towards the equator. The air flowing near the Earth's surface create wind patterns. In addition, as the Earth rotates, air at the equator moves faster than at the poles, which causes the wind to move west and east. Climate can be described as micro or macro. Microclimate is a local climate in a smaller area. Macroclimate is global or regional. Climate can be affected by seasons, water, mountains, etc. Seasons are more distinct in middle latitudes. Seasons are due to the tilt of the earth towards or away from the sun. Oceans also affect climate, especially at the coasts. Oceans heat or cool air masses, and they create more precipitation. Remember, water has a high specific heat and moderates climate. Mountains affect airflow over land. As air rises over mountains, it cools and releases precipitation. On the other side, the cool, dry air descends and absorbs moisture, often creating deserts. Ecosystems are made of biotic or living and abiotic or non-living parts. Both can affect the microclimate. Things like temperature, salinity, water, oxygen, sunlight, rocks, dirt are all considered abiotic. All of the living organisms, which include bacteria, fungi, plants, animals, and protists, are the biotic or living factors. Biomes are areas characterized by plants when we're talking terrestrial biomes, or they can be characterized by the physical environment, like in aquatic biomes. Climate changes with latitude. A climograph shows average temperature and precipitation. Terrestrial biomes often overlap. These areas are called ecotones. A biome can often be disrupted by disturbances, things like fires, storms, or humans that alter the ecosystem. We can look at all of the different types of biomes, and here's a chart that lists the major ones, their location, climate, the types of plants, and the types of animals that they have. Tropical rainforests are near the equator. They have a lot of rainfall and high temperatures. The plants are in vertical layers. They have a lot of diverse animal species, and one of the problems that humans cause is that 
they cut them down for agriculture. Deserts are characterized by low precipitation and high temperatures, but sometimes at night the temperatures can actually get very low. They tend to be around 30 degrees latitude. Plants in the desert are adapted to heat and water loss. Human irrigation has reduced some deserts. Savannas tend to be near the equator. They have long dry seasons and high temperatures. They have few scattered trees. Humans affect the savanna by ranching and hunting, which has lowered the animal populations. Chaparral are in coastal regions. They have rainy winters, dry summers, a variety of temperatures, and they usually have just shrubs and small trees. Humans have built on chaparrals and oftentimes cause fires and or landslides. Temperate grasslands are mainly in middle latitudes and the inner parts of continents. They have dry winters and wet summers. They have seasonal temperatures. In other words, they usually have all four seasons and they're dominated by grass. Temperate grasslands have the most fertile soil, therefore it is where most farms are. Coniferous forests or taiga are in the northern latitudes. They have an average amount of rainfall. Conifers or cone bearers dominate the landscape. Humans heavily log these areas, destroying them. Temperate deciduous forests or broadleaf forests are in middle latitudes. They have higher precipitation, hot, humid summers. Deciduous trees that lose their leaves in the fall and winter dominate. They are very developed and also oftentimes logged. We live in temperate deciduous forests. The tundra are in the Arctic zones. They have average precipitation and very cold temperatures. They are characterized by permafrost, which is an area of ground that never thaws. There's not a lot of people living in the tundra, but we do go there for mineral and oil mining. When we move away from terrestrial biomes and look at aquatic biomes, we can talk about marine, which is about 3% salt, or freshwater, which is lower than 0.1% salt. Oceans cover 75% of the earth, and they have a great impact on the biosphere. Photic zones are the upper layer. Sunlight and photosynthesis occurs there. Aphotic zones are the lower layers where there's little light. The photic and the aphotic zones make up the pelagic zone. The abyssal zone is the lower aphotic zone. It's about 200 to 6,000 meters down. The benthic zone is the bottom where sand and sediment is found. Benthos is the community of organisms that occupy the bottom or the benthic zone. The top layer of, wa of water is warm. The bottom layer is cold. They're separated by the thermocline, which is a layer of abrupt temperature change. Turnover in lakes is when oxygenated surface water sinks and nutrient-rich bottom water rises. This helps the ecosystems of a lake. Lakes include small ponds and the Great Lakes. They differ in oxygen content, salt, and nutrients. The oleotrophic is where there's high oxygen, low nutrients, and low organic sediment. A eutrophic lake has high nutrients, low oxygen, and high organic sediment. The littoral zone of a lake is the shallow water near the shore. It's where plants are. The liminic zone is the deeper part where we find phytoplankton. Runoff is when there's high nutrients causing algal blooms, low amounts of oxygen, and it kills fish. Things like fertilizer that are added to lawns and farms are washed away into local lakes and cause these problems. Wetlands are inundated with water. The water saturates the soil. They have a lot of organic matter, but not a lot of oxygen. They are extremely productive biomes. We tend to drain and fill wetlands so we can build on them. Streams and rivers 
contain moving water with currents. The beginning of a stream or a river is where we find the headwaters. Headwaters are cool, swift, they don't have a lot of softer nutrients, but they have a lot of oxygen. The end of a stream or a river is the mouth. At the mouth, there are high levels of salt and nutrients. Humans pollute streams and rivers and also dam them which, um, for flood control, which can disrupt the ecosystems. Estuaries are where rivers meet the sea. They have high tides and low tides. High tide is when seawater enters the estuary, and low tide is when the seawater leaves the estuary. We also fill, dredge, and pollute these biomes. Intertidal zones are marine shores. They are submerged during high tide, and they are exposed during low tide. Oil pollution walls and barriers are built by humans impacting intertidal zones. The ocean pelagic zone is the open water in the ocean. It covers 70% of the planet. It has a deep photic zone, a lot of oxygen, but not a lot of nutrients. Overfishing and dumping by humans affects this open water. Coral reefs are coral forms that produce calcium carbonate skeletons. There's a lot of diversity in coral reefs. Humans impact them by removing the coral, pollution, and climate change, which is destroying a lot of coral reefs. The marine benthic zone is the sea floor. There's no sunlight, low temperatures, and a lot of water pressure. This is where we find deep sea hydrothermal vents. Again, overfishing and dumping affects these benthic zones.